Hey everybody, I'm going to do another teardown and this time I have the FUBOT and uh, this device is the thing that I used in my air quality study to be kind of my control and tell me what was going on with the air quality in my network and it is not a cheap device. It is $200 and uh, you can't even really get them anymore. Um, and it's kind of weird. Uh, this thing, I, I know the MAC address. I figured out the MAC address of the, of the unit. I know the IP address, but this thing seems to be kind of stealthy on my network. It doesn't come up with most scans. It doesn't, uh, I'm having a hard time finding exactly what it's doing, even using, uh, even using like packet capture stuff like Wireshark. And uh, I did find a, an unencrypted web interface on the unit and so I'm just a little curious about what's inside this thing and uh, what it's doing on my network. So let's tear it apart. First we will unplug for safety. This thing has just a standard USB cord uh, with it and then uh, I'm gonna need a pair of needle nose I think. So I'll get my trusty Craftsman needle nose. So it looks like I can pull these two little thingies here. Yep. Uh, so pull that out. Pull that out and that's going to expose these two screws so it's a it's a cool design it's got some uh you know they, they took some time designing it so i need a number two screwdriver that is skinny i don't think this one's going to work it's a number one anyway uh, i might be able to make that work this is a klein like 11 in one or something weird like that i do like klein tools they're not what they used to be but i like them my dad was a licensed electrician and uh, eventually an electrical engineer and he used a lot of Klein stuff so kind of just have a soft spot in my heart for that. Okay, so let's get the screw out. Got our two screws, I'll put those off to the side and then see what it's going to take to get this thing apart. Again, this was expensive so my goal is not to break it. <laughs> uh, Okay, so I gave it a good tug and the bottom came off. I was, again, I was trying not to break it. Um, but it, as you can see, looking at the bottom, it's it's uh, it's pretty thick plastic and it has just a whole bunch of almost washers cut out here, like five or six of them stacked up to add a little bit of ballast to the bottom of the unit. Uh, it's still pretty heavy even without that. It looks like this board will just slide right out. I'm going to disconnect the power cord and the USB cord. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay, so I think that'll just slide right out now. Okay, there's another set of wire up top. There's another wire that... Okay, so I think what needs to happen is this thing can slide off now. Maybe. Okay, no, we got a couple of screws there. <laughs> this thing's like a jigsaw puzzle. Maybe this is why I don't do teardown videos. So I think I could reach in there and get that cable, but I don't think that's what you're supposed to do. I feel like this is going to require a good tug. <clears throat> there we go. I can feel it moving just a little bit. grab onto it with a pair of pliers or anything I feel it moving so I this thing has to come off first you can kind of tell the order thing was put together I don't want to grab the cable there we go okay so that gets the USB cable out of the way and now I see something pretty familiar so let's uh Let's slip this off if I can. I don't know, can we get that out in one unit? Will that come out as one? Surely not. I'm gonna get off whatever one of these cables is easier to get off. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing in here. There's a cable up here. All right, can you see it? There's a cable here that goes over to this 
daughter board over here. So whatever one will come off, I'll take. I should use a spudger. There we go. Okay. Who needs spudgers? Okay, so the last thing that's in here is a sensor that looks very familiar to me. It's just sitting there. It's not even attached to anything. This, I'm going to go grab the other one. Give me a second. Okay, so this is the one from the FUBOT, and this is the WaveShare board. So that tells me that the sensor inside of this, inside of this $200 FUBOT, is available for 14 something on Amazon from Key Studio and WaveShare, if I remember correctly. Uh, and they just pair it with this other little board down here and even give you a nice little pinout on it. So, again, I don't fault them for adding value. They run servers and they wrote apps and all that kind of stuff. But inside the $200 FUBOT is a $15 sensor at retail. So, let's see what else they have going on here. So, we have this... Okay, I... See, I would have thought that this was a more traditional LED strip. You probably saw it when it first lit up. I would have thought that there was just... A strip on there but they're actually using discrete LEDs and uh, I don't know that I'm gonna pull this apart um, now this is interesting so I can't tell uh, I'm very interested to know what kind of processor that is it looks it looks bigger than an ESP8266 and a uh, and an ESP32 but it could just be the, a bigger heat spreader on top uh, Let's see, see here. So we have an A, an IAQ Core C. I don't know what that is. We'll find out, out about that. Okay, so I took a few minutes to take a gander at this thing, and uh, we'll start with this chip here. This is the one that looks like an ESP8266 or something like that. And uh, it is an HFLPB100, uh, and it is not a microcontroller of any kind. It is just a Wi-Fi chip, and they call it the world's lowest power consumption Wi-Fi chip. It's a BGN, 802.11n, so, uh, and so uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a Wi-Fi chip. So the other one over here is a little bit more interesting. It is a an IAQ Core C, and it has, it, it speaks over I squared C, and one of the things I thought was pretty interesting about it is that it has this automatic baseline correction. So this chip, is very specifically designed for air quality and so it, it is a purpose-driven chip and as much as I make fun of you know this sensor and this sensor being the same thing as somebody who writes software for a living I can tell you the software matters and the, the fact that this chip here is programmed to you know correct for whatever this sensor is putting out does say something and I will say that during my testing for the air quality this thing, it at least seemed accurate. When you, when I would look at some of the Arduino sensors, not necessarily the dust sensor, but when I would look at some of the sensors, you just couldn't really trust what they were saying because it didn't seem to line up with what was going on in the atmosphere. So overall, um, you know, overall, the, this, this FUBOT seems like it does a good job of air quality. Before I fully uh, end the video, I do want to show you that I was able to get the FUBOT back together in one piece and uh, I do want to point out maybe I'll a little sub screen this uh, but there is another connector in here for another one of these PM sensors and, and I don't know if I explained this but uh, both this and the FUBOT have what they call a PM 2.5 sensor which basically measures particles down to the 2.5 microns and uh, there are different classes of sensors for reading different size particles so um, it looks like they have an option to have two different sensors in there now i don't really see space to have two different sensors so maybe they use that one board for something else or maybe these are stackable or something like that i really don't know how that works but uh at least the board itself looks like it was designed to have multiple sensors so anyway i'll keep you posted the thing that i want to do a little bit more digging into is the data that it's sending out um my gut says in my initial testing that it is not sending the data out encrypted uh and and so i mean it's encrypted as far as the wi-fi connection like you're not going to sniff it in midair on my network but leaving my network i don't think it's encrypted and uh, i don't like that web interface that's just sitting there without uh, me having the password to it so there's there's basically anybody on my network 
who has the right credentials could use this for something nefarious, potentially. I don't know. I can't get into that web interface to see what it is. So um, I'm going to do a little bit more digging, but if I don't come up with anything concrete in time for this video, I may post a second one just about hacking the software side of the FUBOT. So let me know if that's something that interests you, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.